Hi everybody, it's Phil Zio from One Wall Studio here, and I'm actually here to review Grind Machine 2 by Audio Assault. Now, before you guys think I'm an Audio Assault shill channel because I review everything Audio Assault, I'm not really. I actually just really like their products and use them a lot on everything because they do stuff differently than any other company does. Check it out, y'all. I've got Grind Machine 2 here on a session that I've already been working on. So previously, I had Kazrog's Thermionic on it with Nadir or Nadir or Nade IR by Ignite Amps as the IR loader and the amp simp. And I basically wanted like a Marshall-esque sound for it. But with all the processing, it sounds like this. In context. Very punk sounding song. Artist was heavily inspired by U2. Now, the cool part is, if I put these in solo again, you can really hear the difference that turning off all the processing makes from having just used Thermionic, a Rosen Digital Cab Sim. That's the raw tone. And here's Grind Machine. Now, in context... And here it is with all the same processing that I had on it before. Now, you may think, huh, that sounds really weird. I don't know if that sounds better. Well, that's also because the processing was all done for the other thing. But if I turn that all off and you just listen to... You get a feel for the dynamics of the imp. What's really cool about it is there's a whole bunch of options here in settings to tweak. And one of my favorite parts, and why I've been using this on almost every session since I've started uh, using Grind Machine, is you don't have to open this list. You can scroll through them with these left and right buttons fairly easily and just keep changing until you find them. Or, now if I were to load the default preset here, I'm already getting a really nice sound even in context of the mix. It sounds really nice, and I like it. You've got a whole bunch of solos, a whole bunch of lead stuff. You needed something that's going to be able to cut through while also le letting a lead step in when it has to. So far, I've found it's really amazing for that. Now, a couple of the things that I've been noticing is every single update since I got it has added something else. Now, originally it just came with the gate, pre, cab, impact buttons, all the knobs, obviously, but they added a tight button, which acts kind of like, to my ears, a tube screamer. That wasn't there when I first bought the plugin. They've actually added it in an update, so that's really cool. Another thing to notice is it's got a gate here. It's just a gate knob though, so you're basically adjusting it for level and that's it. It's set to work really well with stuff like this too. One thing I love doing, instead of stopping every couple of seconds, going back and finding a tone, is literally just looping one section, say this section with very large dynamics changes right here, and scrolling.
and then scrolling through the cabs. That sounds like it fits the sound I'm going for really well. Then I adjust the impact. Now the impact is really interesting. Listen to what it does specifically to the low end. It's almost like a real amp knob. What it does is it simulates some kind of mic movement or something in the low end and like smooths out the highs a little bit it feels like as if it was a real cab being driven into the cab. It's like it does that thing like right where you find the sweet spot. Sometimes for some tracks I've got a lot of low end already like if I crank the bass. I'll then use impact and it'll create that low end rumble. that woofy smear in the low end that I'd expect a real cab to have. So once I'm done all those things, I'd like to tweak. And bam, I've got a tone that I want for the song. Let's see how close it is to the original tone that I had. I actually think it sounds better with this song than the tone that I actually had, which that's not sad. That's a really good thing because it means that it just sounds great. Now, another thing you can do is disable the pre amp section and use a different pre with the cabs. So you can use it as a cab IR loader and go to the impulse folder and actually drag in new impulses. Now you'll notice with just the cab loader enabled, The bands actually become EQ bands. Not only that, but they become EQ bands that act as pass filters sometimes. So no bass, all mids. Only the mids are heard. Noon would be noon, so 0 dB cut, 0 dB boost. Gain does nothing because there's nothing. but all this works as an EQ. So there's so much functionality in this one little user interface, it's crazy. Personally, my favorite cab is Raunchy, but for some of the mixes, other cabs just work so much better. Turn that off, there you go. So even when you have the preamp disabled, even if you're driving another amp sim through it because you don't want any of the 15 included amps, but you want something else that it doesn't provide, you can use it as a cab loader. And because you can drag and drop your own personal IRs into it, you can literally have so much customizability and just go through and click this a whole bunch of times, stop at a random one, say, oh, I'm going with this one. Boom, sounds great. That's how good this plugin is. Like, I, I don't know what to tell you guys. This is one of my shortest reviews ever because, in all honesty, all the things you can do with this plugin can be shown in such a short period of time, but it doesn't matter. It really does. It feels like plug and play all the way. I love this plugin to death. And honestly, I have mixed almost nothing recently using any plugins except this one for guitar tones. I can't explain to you how good it feels to be able to throw this on anything. Say, well, I don't even need that much processing on it. Maybe throw on a tape sim. smooth out the high end a bit, but that's, that's literally it. That's all I want. And I mean, I could show you guys more, more tracks, like the lead track, for example, turning off all the stuff that I do during this solo. 
What can even be said? That is an instant guitar tone. Let me turn off all processing, except the delay. Boom, lead guitar tone. How does this happen? Okay, first of all, I wanna know why nobody has done this before. And second of all, I wanna thank Audio Assault for making this plugin. I was uh, one of the beta testers for this plugin, and it was an incredible experience. I mean, of course, in the beginning it was pretty buggy, but like, Hearing the release version and how they didn't need to change much between the beta testing and the release because the amps and the cabs themselves sound freaking phenomenal. I just drag and drop this onto any guitar bus that I have, whether it's leads, whether it's rhythms, whether it's even acoustics sometimes. Sometimes I'll actually run an acoustic through the Accutronic and I'll do this. <laughs> Like, you can immediately get some really killer tones with this thing without having to mess with IRs, without having to mess with a drag-and-drop interface of any kind. I drop this in, press the right or left button until I find something I like, and it's done. Right there. And honestly, right now, it's on sale for $9. You cannot beat that quality for that price. I mean, eventually it'll be 50 which is... Even then, a little low for what I feel like it's worth because I shot this out with Pod Farm and a whole bunch of other plugins, and it felt like a disservice to even compare it to anything else. I love Kazrog, I love a whole bunch of guitar tones from a whole bunch of different people, but this is like the ease of use and the sound quality that you get for it. I cannot recommend it enough. So there you go, and I hope you buy it from Audio Assault. Check it out because this is. The best amp to price ratio of any plugin ever. Period. And they all sound amazing. This has been Phil Zio signing off. Thank you. And I hope to see you again next time.